is fair to say that uh, you don't conserve wildlife just for the sake of conservation. Uh, conservation, after all, is it should be a sustainable uh, operation. We see the sadly diminished gazelle populations tenaciously hold on. Whilst the dragon-like dub, the spiny-tailed lizard, placidly shares its cool, deep burrow with any creatures that dare to try. Vultures endure the daunting heat of the day, nesting on treetops fully exposed to searing temperatures. We even come across large desert oasis, important resting stop-offs for migrating birds, such as these majestic steppe eagles. At last, we reach the seas of Arabia. The Arabian Peninsula is touched by seven seas, all with very different conditions of depth, temperatures, light and salinity, supporting a myriad species, some uniquely adapted to coping in this region many of which are yet to be identified. In stark contrast to the sunburnt deserts on land, some of Arabia's marine environments are amongst the richest aquatic ecosystems in the Indian Ocean. We explore the shallow, warm waters of the Arabian Gulf, with its dwindling threatened coral carpets and important seagrass beds, home to endangered species such as turtles and dugongs. We visit highly productive mangrove ecosystems, sustaining fish nurseries crustaceans and many species of marine birds. The Arabian Gulf's intertidal biodiversity is a vitally important link in sustaining this region's ecological welfare. Offshore islands create ideal remote nesting sites for numerous bird species and turtles. set against the majestic granite fjords of the Musandam Peninsula through the narrow straits of Hormuz. We find some amazingly healthy coral reefs, profiting from strong upwelling that channels plankton-rich waters through narrow passages into the Gulf. Juvenile whale sharks hang out here. We watch as white tip reef sharks hunt at night in the Gulf of Oman. While some species come out to feed, 
other reef denizens risk going to sleep. With five of the seven known turtle species, Oman is home to the largest nesting population of loggerhead turtles in the world and is also host to the largest nesting population of green turtles in the Indian Ocean. With statistics like that, regional authorities are taking their conservation responsibilities very seriously indeed. <laughs> The monsoon cycle in southern Oman creates a spectacular seasonal explosion of temperate marine life along the Arabian Sea coast. Cold water upwelling brought in from the continental shelf by monsoon winds, replace the warm tropical surface waters. And here you find temperate and tropical marine life living side by side. This same upwelling creates plankton blooms that are thought to sustain conditions that support the world's only resident humpback whale population. We follow a team of cetacean specialists as they try to estimate whale and dolphin numbers in the Arabian Sea. The last pristine coral reefs of the Red Sea are found along hundreds of kilometers of the Saudi Arabian coastline, which we explored with the support of the Kingdom's Coast Guard, discovering many stunningly beautiful virgin reefs. These spectacular coral conditions continued all the way up into the Gulf of Aqaba until we reached Jordanian scientists as they try to maintain a balance between marine protected areas and industrial or tourism demands on the mere 29 kilometer stretch of Jordan's coastline. So this is a limited coast, in fact, but it is very important and is characterized of the many habitats, in fact, one of the main habitat is the coral reef ecosystem, which is considered as one of the most complex and diversified ecosystem. It is equivalent to the rainforest in uh, tropical. This series looks earnestly and how man-made pressures are affecting many ecosystems and species. Yeah, this is whatever comes 
from here could be recommended to the coordinators and then establishing this network. We're gonna to base on it and go. Yeah. I mean, Jordan and For the last uh, few years, through the CAM meetings, we found that uh, it was so important to cooperate and to uh, uh, encourage cooperation between the countries, uh, not only between the uh, biologists and the scientists, but of course also through the, uh, with the government uh, and the regions. It is very important for us to really work together in a very close relationship uh, in order to really uh, put up uh, a common strategy where we can conserve the wildlife of Arabia as general and of course concentrate on the more uh, endangered, more threatened species uh, in, in the Arabian Peninsula. We also meet true heroes of conservation and learn how many conservation efforts have been ongoing for well over 25 years. And yet, people are surprised to hear about many of these efforts, as Arabian conservation has in the past been shrouded in sensitive and sometimes political or social issues. Hunting has largely been responsible for the loss of most of our big mammals. And now, loss of habitat through human encroachment and rapid development is making it more and more difficult to prevent the loss of more species. Throughout many parts of Arabia, countless conservationists, researchers and government authorities are trying to safeguard what is left. As the sun sets at the end of this journey, whole cycles of life continue.